Hello all, Old Geek again, and this video will be part one of a series of overviews of MERP products, specifically modules and supplements. Since I started making videos on this game, there has been one question that I've been asked a number of times. What is the best way to start? As the books are expensive on the second hand market, which should I focus on due to having limited funds? And my answer? The 1986 red box set with the revised rulebook, the Creatures of Middle Earth supplement, which is Merp's version of the Monster Manual, and then choose a region of the world that most interests you and focus on the setting books and, adve and adventures that pertain to that region. Because, of course, getting three to four books that you will use thoroughly is clearly preferable to getting a scattered array of books, especially as the books are not cheap. Not as expensive as some greedy individuals try to claim they are, but still not cheap. One of the regulars to, to my channel recently picked up three main books and paid a hundred dollars for all three together so you can still get these books for a sensible price not pocket money but a sensible price anyway to guide you with this process i'm now going to go through what is available and with the help of a map show you which products pertain to which parts of middle earth Here's the map I'll be using for this first part, as there are a lot of products, and to put them all together in one image would make this a little congested. So, for part one, focusing on the region to the west of the Misty Mountains and north of Gondor. Initially, I'll be adding the books in the campaign setting series for first edition MERP, and the Realms books from 2nd edition. As their categorization suggests, these were not traditional adventure modules, though some contained lists of adventure ideas and short scenarios. The main function, though, was to provide details about each region. Flora, fauna, people, politics, history, events, and so on. And the level of detail, especially in the later second edition realms books was astonishing bear in mind the vast majority of material in these books refers to the mid third age around 1640 which is about 1300 years before all those stories we know so well ice or ICE have clearly developed a lot of stuff themselves for these books using Tolkien's work as the basis. So, starting uh, up in the far north, we have Angmar, the Land of the Witch King, which was published in 1982. I believe it was the first Middle-earth product from Iron Crown. It doesn't even mention Merp, as it predated the system by about two years. It's extremely detailed, but due to its age, it's somewhat crude and clunky. Thankfully, in 1989, it was reworked with additional material as Empire of the Witch King, which is a 128-page beast of a book, and then again for the second edition Realms line as simply Angmar, and now expanded to 160 pages. These latter two versions are stunning products, but sadly, both are rather expensive, and all too often they're sold with their maps missing. Moving down the map a little, we have the Lost Realm of Cardolan and Rangers of the North, the Kingdom of Arthurdane. Those two were published in the 1980s, and then in 1994 we got them repackaged, along with a lot of previously unpublished material covering Rudor, in probably the most insane of all Merp products, the massive Arnor. 
a region guide totaling over 400 pages in length. In 1997, ICE divided this into two separate books, Arnor the Land and Arnor the Peoples. All of these works are outstanding. The complete Arnor is perhaps the most thorough and complete work for an RPG that I've ever set eyes on. But it's all a bit too much. And I wouldn't recommend any of these Arnor region guides to anyone new to Merp. Plus, while the Cardolan and Arthurdane books are among the more affordable products in the line, the later Arnor compendiums are among the most expensive. If you were going to set a campaign in this region, I would try and pick up one of the older books because you can pick them up fairly sensibly, a fairly sensible price and then see if you like them before throwing all that cash down on the big ones. Heading eastwards, you'll find Moria. First seen in Moria, the Dwarven City in 1984 and reworked as simply Moria in 1994. These books require very little by way of explanation and come highly recommended. And if I had to choose one over the other, I would go for the bigger and more detailed second edition reissue. Both are extensive and exceptionally detailed, but the later version has more to it and is more GM friendly to read. Sadly, it costs twice as much as the earlier release though, with the 1994 version being one of the cheaper and easier to find of all Merp setting books. The 1994 edition is neither of those things. Now let's plop the lovely second edition Shire Realm book on the map. This contained all new material, not seen until its publication in 1995, plugging a much needed gap in the game world. It's big, 276 pages, highly detailed and contains all the charm that you would expect from a book detailing the little folk. I love it to bits and if it didn't command a hefty price tag I'd recommend it to everyone straight away. Bear in mind though that this book focuses on the Shire when it was in its infancy, not the established quiet peaceful land of the late third age. Many of the famous towns and villages we all know do not yet exist and much of the land is still wild which makes it a good place for adventure. There is one more setting guide for this part of the map and that's Dunland and the Southern Misty Mountains squeezing on right at the bottom. If you are new to Merp ignore this one. It's one of the weaker region guides anyway and unless you particularly want to delve into Dunlending clan politics I think you'll have more fun elsewhere. Now I'm going to add the more specific adventures to the map. In general there were two types of these. Adventure modules, which combine setting info with three or more scenarios of varying length and detail, and there were also what were named ready to run modules, which had less setting info if any at all, but three more detailed and usually more complete adventure scenarios designed for a variety of levels of characters, all in one book, typically first, third and fifth. Let's start with the adventure modules. Bree and the Barrow Downs. I've reviewed it, I won't go into much more detail here. It's very good. More setting than adventures, but that doesn't matter. Lots of useful info, lots of solid seeds and lovely maps. I highly recommend it. Dark Mage of Rudor slots nicely into the southwest Rudor region set around the East Road through the Troll Shores. The later adventure modules had a bit more adventure and a bit less setting and this 1990, 1989 release typified that in that it's got probably I think 15 to 20 pages of setting and then some quite beefy adventures towards the back. I would ignore the fact that it's officially set 200 years earlier than the rest of the modules. I doubt anyone will notice. As you'll already see though, this is a well-supported part of the world. 
and a great area in which to set a game. So we go a little bit to the north now, where we have Hillmen of the Trollshores, which is also an excellent product, detailing the area around the town of Kamatha Bryn. It's a bit earlier than Dark Mage of Rudor, thus has a bit more setting detail and a bit less adventure, but it's still very good. Plus we've also got Looms of the Long Fell, an adventure that came with the 1986 box set, and that was later released as part of an accessory pack for 2nd edition. It's one of the reasons why I recommend getting that box set, because you get the adventure for free with it. Save, you save money. It's a decent little adventure, it's far better than the other two scenarios that are provided with the various main game rulebooks, which are rubbish for beginners. And it's set on the edge of the Troll Shores. Lots of product for that region, so a good place to adventure. I might as well plonk Rivendell, House of Elrond, in now. Don't bother with this one. It's high on detail, low on adventure. Very much one for the purists, or people who prefer to LARP as elves rather than go out and slay orcs. Heading south a long way, we have the 1990 release Ghost Warriors, which I've included on this map because I've mentioned Dunland, but the adventures in this module cover some of Dunland and some of the region just to the south, which will be on the map section um, south of this one. So this sort of overlaps a little bit. It is a solid adventure collection if you want to set your game in Dunland. Most people don't, which is a shame. Over to Cardolan now, and an excellent module in the form of Thieves of Tharbad. I think this is one of Ice's best. Though it can be a little awkward due to the timeline of Tharbad itself. This module is set just after the year 1400 in the Third Age, a lot earlier than most other products. If your group aren't into an extreme level of nerdiness and not, are not likely to be upset by wonky cannon, I'd, ig uh, I'd ignore that and just enjoy the module. Pretend it's 1600, pretend Tharbad was still like this in 1600. Who cares? Moving away to the west, there's Rogues of the Borderlands, set in Numeriador. It's an interesting collection of adventures, but it does suffer due to the general lack of support for this western part of the world. Already now though, you can see a pattern forming and that Arthurdane, Cardolan and the Trollshores all have quite a lot of material for them. So much that a campaign set in that sort of central region could go on for years. But we still have a few more products to add to the map. Firstly though, I'm gonna put uh, the Weathertop supplement in place was part of the Fortresses series. If you're looking to start a Merp game on a budget, don't bother with this one. No, it's not particularly expensive, it's just somewhat unnecessary. So now the, uh, the ready to run adventure booklets. Each of these products contained three adventures, and as I've already said, they're aimed at typically one adventure at level one, one at level three, and one at level five. Somewhere around that sort of mix. They were light on lore and setting details, focusing more thoroughly on the adventure scenarios themselves. So you got a bit more story with these. These are more like your familiar D&D module in format. There are four in that series that are applicable to this region of Middle-earth on this big map. And all four are set during the core period, around 1640 in the Third Age. And the four modules are Trolls of the Misty Mountains, which is set in Eastern Rudor. Then we've got Phantom of the Northern Marches, which is based a little to the northwest in Northern Rudor. More support for that region around the Troll Shores. For the other two, we head to the far southwest, to the Erin Vaughan, the modules Raiders of Cardolan and Woeses of the Black Wood are both located down there, a little bit away from most of the other um, modules and supplements that are available for this game. So with these final editions it is pretty clear. If you want to get started in Merp, there are 
a hell of a lot of supplements out there and you need to be quite selective as to which ones you choose because of the prices they command the cheapest i tend to find merc products for at the moment is about 15 to 20 pounds and those are the very common ones and often in quite poor condition um i i bid quite frugally um i rarely go above 20 25 pounds when bidding and i often get outbid but i'm going to be patient i'm going to try and get these things as cheaply as i can some people do pay a lot more and my assessment of this map might be a little predictable but the area around Bree and into the troll shores strikes me as the perfect place for most campaigns to begin and most newcomers to merp to start so I do hope you enjoyed this video that there will be another two or three following over the next few weeks as I cross over the Misty Mountains and head into Mirkwood and uh, go on to explore the southern lands of Gondor, Rohan and Mordor. <laughs>